Uh, we'll get underway with the student athletes from Clemson, the number six seed in the West region, a record of 21 and 11. They'll play the second game here tomorrow at FedEx Forum. We're joined by, uh, from my left, graduate student Joseph Gerard III. In the center is senior P.J. Hall, and then to the far side, redshirt senior Chase Hunter. We'll open it up for questions for the student athletes. Again, if you'll raise your hand, we'll get you a microphone. Let's start with your name and affiliation and the student athlete where you're directing your question. Uh, Jason Munns with the Commercial Appeal here in Memphis. Welcome back, first of all. You guys were here just a few months ago, and that's kind of what I was going to ask you about. Is that Did that go through your mind at all when, when the announcement was made where you were going and stuff? And then how do you feel about coming back uh, and playing in a building that you're sort of familiar with but also had a little bit of bad luck on, on the floor there? Joseph? Uh, yeah, I mean, I think it's a, you know, especially in March, you want to, you know, look at all the little things to kind of give you a little bit of an advantage. And, I mean, you can kind of look at that to, to our, uh, like I said, our advantage. And, um, but in the end, you got to still play the game, go out there. But, you know, it definitely was a little bit good for us to have some familiarity with where we're going, um, familiarity with the arena, obviously the hoops, all that kind of stuff. So definitely gives us a little bit of an advantage. But at the end of the day, you still got to go out and play. It's all right. Hey, guys, uh, Mike Barber, Richmond Times-Dispatch, good to see you. Uh, if all three of you could answer this from your own perspective, um, with the transfer portal, with everything that goes on in college basketball, we see fewer guys spending four years in college, four years at one school. Um, what do you think of that trend, and how have you personally kind of chosen your paths uh, for how you've done things? Let me start with Chase and work this way. Um, yeah, I mean, I think it all depends on the player. It all depends on, you know, the school and – you know, what they go through in their career. You know, I'm a person that's been at Clemson for four years now, um, well, five years, and, um, you know, I've, it's been a long journey, and, um, you know, I just had my own path. And I think, you know, it just depends on the player. It depends on the school. You know, you can go through things with coaches leaving, players leaving. Um, and like I said, it just depends on the player and what they go through. But now with the portal, you know, you have an opportunity to, to go to another school and, you know, maximize your college career. So, you know, like I said, it just depends on the player and what they want to do in their career. Uh, yeah, and to the same extent of what he was saying, you know, it all depends on the player and uh, their situation. Uh, obviously, I mean, Joe was at <clears throat> Syracuse for four years and then had a fifth year, so it's a little different situation for getting into the portal. But, you know, there's also situations, you know, like um, where to an extent there's too many guys jumping in as well. That's kind of the thing going on right now. But that's what I think has given strength to a lot of these mid-majors that – they have turned into, you know, like the JMUs and stuff and great, great um, teams and programs because you have these guys that are more experienced and stay there for four years, have a core group. If you can build that core group right now and keep them there for a while, it gets you really tight on the court. And, uh, you know, we have some guys here that have been here for a while, me, Chase, uh, Ian Shefflin's been here for three years, uh, uh, Alex Hemingway, who's uh, not playing right now, but he's, you know, still a guy who's involved a lot. And it's, uh, that's what's special about Clemson. We're tending to be a school that, you know, keeps guys um, – you know, set in stone for a while. And uh, we're very welcoming of new guys. That's been great for us this year, and it's nice to have that. And um, at the same time, it's also, you know, a great thing to have guys for four years. Uh, yeah, I think these guys both hit it right on the head. I think it's different for everybody. Um, and, you know, me personally, my path was a little bit different. Uh, I graduated from Syracuse. My coach decided to retire. And, you know, obviously playing for Coach Bayheim, there's nothing like it. So once that happened, uh, COVID was kind of like a blessing in disguise. You get another year. Um, and another opportunity, and I said, why not, you know, let's explore something else, and obviously Clemson was the best choice for me. Um, but there's obviously pros and cons to everything. I think it's good for guys who um, feel like they made a, you know, a decision that wasn't the best for themselves or they, right out of high school, um, and, you know, it doesn't work out for them for whatever reason. Um, it kind of gives them a second chance to go somewhere else um, and kind of revive their career and make, make something out of it. So I think there's always positives in everything, and uh, it just depends how you look at it. Down front. This question is for any of you guys, but just how aware are you of the projections or the, the picks of, you know, everybody saying New Mexico is one of the most likely to um, have an upset. So, I mean, do you take that in? Do you block it out? Kind of how much do you think about it? Uh, I mean, yeah, it's, I mean, it's pretty hard not to see that kind of stuff just with all social media and stuff. But, you know, at the same time, like, you know, also after our last loss, I mean, I can't blame a whole lot of people for thinking that. But at the same time, We've had some great press leading into this, and we know what kind of team we are. We're excited to get out there and play. And whatever it may be, 16-1, 11-6, 12-5, you 
anybody can win on the court. And uh, we're focused on our guys, and we're excited to get out there. Other questions for the student athletes? We can stay down here. I guess in terms of their tempo, uh, do, they, do they remind you of anybody you played during the season, or how unique are they in terms of how fast they get up and down the floor? Yeah, I mean, uh, I think they kind of play sort of the Alabama. Um, you know, quick guards, you know, big big physical bigs that can that can do some things. But, um, yeah, I, I think they play similar to Alabama. You know, they're a team that likes to run and get up and down, got some quick guards that can make plays for themselves. So, you know, I think, you know, we prepare well for them. Hey, guys, uh, Mike from Richmond again. Uh, again, all three of you from your different perspectives. Uh, Chase and PJ, you've been at a school your entire career that, that's very football crazy. Uh, Joe, you came from a school that, that probably lives and dies a little more with basketball. Um, how have you seen the culture at Clemson uh, with the success that Coach Brownell has had and the success that you guys have had this year, but, but also in recent years? Uh, yeah, I mean, it's been, it's been a fun year. Um, just because, you know, we've had some success, and uh, along with other sports being good, it's been a fun year for sports in general. And so, you know, coming off a 10-win uh, a, a season with football last year, I was really excited for them going into this year. And, you know, that's, you know, that's our main sport at Clemson. There's no denying it. And so having basketball, having a great year this year has been fun for us because, I mean, people like to say, like, oh, basketball's got a bad seat or, you know, other sports have a bad seat. But at a school like Clemson where it's a small community, everybody's tight knit, I mean, Everybody's in love with Clemson sports in general. Uh, I mean, we have crazy support for our soccer teams who are national champions, um, softball who got added a few years ago. I mean, our gymnastics team we got added this year has been sold out every meet at our, our uh, arena. And then it's, I mean, it's electric. And so Clemson Athletics has incredible support across the board. And it's, uh, it definitely doesn't feel like we have a back seat. So it's, uh, it's fun to play at Clemson for sure. Come to the center here. Also, if you are a media member on uh, watching this via Zoom, you can raise your hand and we will get uh, you in as time allows. We'll go to the center. PJ or Chase, whoever wants, or both. Um, was there anything about when you were here the last time that you, that, that sort of you used going forward over the rest of the season to like maybe inform how you approached certain things or was there something that you... I don't know, like a lesson that you learned or anything from here that, that you employed the rest of the way? I mean, yeah, yeah. I would say for me, um, that was the COVID year we went. So it was definitely a different experience. You know, we were at one hotel with all the other teams. And are you, are you talking that? about playing here or the – Oh, or playing here. Okay, I thought you were yeah. talking about tournament. Oh, okay, yeah. playing here. Um, no, I mean, like, like Joe said, like we said about playing here, it's like, you know, you play – on the same rims, play on the same court. Um, you know, but at the end of the day, we just got to go out and play our best game. And I think that, um, you know, playing here definitely was an advantage that we play here earlier in the season. And, um, you know, it didn't turn out the way we wanted to. But, um, you know, we got another chance, another opportunity to uh, prove ourselves. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'd say in terms of like how the game went, one thing I thought about after that was, you know, as it gets down to the wire with the team that, you know, is a little bit run and jump like Memphis was, uh, who's – kind of similar to a New Mexico, probably not as fast, but, uh, you know, play your game, stay poised, and uh, run your stuff. That's a, that's a big thing when you were playing fast teams. You got to stay calm. Don't let yourself get sped up. That's what we, uh, we kind of learned from that Memphis game, I think, and uh, try to employ or implore for the rest of the year. Yeah. Go right here. <clears throat> this is really for any of you, uh, Avery Braxton, ABC 24 here in Memphis, but what does it feel like, especially uh, PJ and Chase, to bring Clemson back? To, to this stage, uh, you guys haven't been here in a couple of years. Um, yeah, I mean, I'd say, first of all, we, did, we didn't do it alone. Uh, we got incredible coaches and a lot of guys that came to help us along the way. I mean, obviously, we brought in new guys like Joe and Jack, uh, who were tremendous boosts for us, shooting on the outside, then a one through five switching with Jack, who can play incredible defensive rebound. And so, I mean, it's, I tell you what, it wasn't just us bringing us back, but it's, uh, it's been fun. It's, it's been expected. I mean, last year we, bet, we definitely felt shorted um, after having a great year, 14 wins in the ACC, um, and getting left out of the tournament. So this year it's not necessarily like, oh, we got to get to the tournament. We got to get to the tournament. That was, you know, that's our floor. That's what, how we expected it. And so the whole year we were expected to come in here and, um, and play our game and make some noise. That's kind of how we thought about it the entire year with the players we have and the coaches we have. In our last five minutes, we're going to go to the back left and then back down here to the front. 
Hey, this is for each of you. As you noted, you kind of struggled down the stretch. If each of you could take an aspect of the team going into tomorrow that you think you got to kind of flip that switch to get back to where you were playing your best, what would it be in each of your opinions? Let Joseph start. I think first off, I think that uh, our practices this last week have been a lot better. Uh, there's a lot more on edge. Um, and I think just kind of one of the things that the coaches were, I guess, um, emphasizing was getting our edge back. And, uh, you know, we had that obviously the first two months in the season. And it's easy to have an edge when you're, you know, 10 and 0 or whatever it was, and 10 and 11 and 1 at one point. So um, it's easy to be up uh, when things are going great, but when things were going bad, um, you just got to figure out a way to get out of the hole um, and try to get that edge back. And I think that's what we've done this last week. Um, and, you know, again, just trying to look at everything positive. Losing early in the ACC tournament kind of gives you a chance to go back to practice um, and get your, get your mind right. So um, I think if we took a look at it that way, um, it'll help us for tomorrow. PJ? Uh, yeah, yeah, especially what we were saying at the last point. Um, losing early in the ACC tournament, the fashion that we did was not just disappointing, but embarrassing. And so, you know, going back to these prices, going good on good and making sure we're sharpening our edges and making sure we're having a competitive edge and fight it was, uh, was huge for us. <clears throat> and going into these, these um, last few practices after we, you know, we had some time off, or, or not time off, but the first couple after the ACC tournament, you know, sharpening our minds ready for this tournament and sharpening our minds for our opponent. That's, uh, that's been big for us. You know, it's not necessarily flipping a switch. If you have to flip a switch, then, you know, you have a problem, uh, especially this late in the year. We, uh, it's, it's time to, you know, be ready to be on go at all times. Chase? Yeah, yeah for me, I think, you know, game-wise, you know, we just got to be able to fight through adversity. You know, we've had some games where, you know, we started off great and, um, you know, teams come out and make a run. And we just, you know, as the three leaders here, we, we got to be able to step up and, you know, whatever it's calling time out, bring the team together and, you know, making sure we get a stop. We're making sure we get a big basket when we need it. So I think, you know, going to this tournament, you know, we've, we've made sure we put more focus on that and um, you know, making sure as leaders of this team that we, we get the team together and, you know, do what we need to do. All right, we're going to come down front. Then if time allows, we do have one in Zoom, so go ahead. Uh, PJ, you were mentioning the coaching staff, obviously. Uh, Coach Brownell, how much respect do you feel like he gets from the fan base compared to what he deserves? And is there any motivation to try to make a run to kind of back him up? Yeah, I mean, there's uh, there's always been motivation for me to, to, and not just me, the whole team, to fight and, you know, win for him. I mean, the loss at Cameron this year was – sickening because you know I know he never won there he's had so many close chances and it feels every time it's like you know what's going on like it hurts and so you know wanting to win for him wanting to win for the rest of our coaching staff is huge because I don't want to say there's not a respect for him but there is you know you hear all the outside voices of you know people who aren't fans of him and you know it's uh it's frustrating because of how much we care and love that guy and how incredible he is and how smart of a coach he is and so it's uh it definitely is an added motivation to fight for our coaches and you know, it's there's not a not a whole lot of motivation you need to get up for these games. But whenever you have added added stuff, it's um, it's special. Yeah. All right. Lastly, uh, we'll go to Darian Carter, Greenville News on uh, Zoom. Go ahead. Hey guys, uh, this is for uh, any of you. Um, just what has been Coach Brownell's uh, message heading into tomorrow's game that he's been hammering uh, throughout these last few days of practices? Go ahead, Joseph. Like I said, I think it was getting the edge back. Um, and, you know, Coach Brownell is someone who loves to go to work, um, loves to work hard. And, you know, he kind of said that to us that, you know, ultimately we had a lot of days in between our last game and then tomorrow. Um, and, you know, <laughs> likely we probably wanted a few more days off. But Coach Brownell just is a, is a guy who likes to get back to work. And, you know, I think it's good for us and it's been good for us. And it's kind of given us that competitive spirit that uh, will help us, you know, for tomorrow. And I think just the biggest thing is, is getting the edge back, like I said. We'll get you guys out on that. Uh, thank you for your time, and good luck tomorrow. Appreciate it. Thank you all. Just stand by. We'll be joined by Clemson head coach Brad Brownell. How are you? Good. Fine, thank you.
And we are joined at the podium by Brad Brownell, head coach at Clemson, who has led the Tigers to the NCAA now for the fourth time under his guidance. We'll let Coach make an opening statement before we open it up for questions. Yeah, just excited to be here. Um, really happy for our players, especially after uh, being left out last year. Uh, I think, you know, just really wanted these guys to be able to experience this opportunity. We uh, were last in the tournament, I think it was in 21, which was the COVID year. So guys like Chase and, and uh, PJ for us, Alex Hemingway, those guys didn't really get a true NCAA tournament. Um, so we're just excited to be here. I have a lot of respect for Richard, coached against him while he was at Minnesota. He's done a terrific job there at New Mexico, a super talented team that is probably playing their best basketball when it matters most right now, having won the Mountain West Tournament. And uh, we know we have our hands full with that group. So, uh, But we're looking forward to the challenge. And uh, we didn't play our best in our last outing. And I think our guys are looking forward to, to uh, doing a little bit better this time. Remind our media members to uh, give your name and your affiliation. We'll start to our right, Coach. Hey, Brad. Mike Barber, Richmond Times hey, Dispatch. Mike. Good to see you. Good to see you. I I'm curious. I mean, obviously, you added a couple of important pieces, but the core of this team are guys who've been together yeah. for a long time. How has that changed the way you coach them, and how has that made them better because of maybe that chemistry or whatever you've seen? Yeah, I think, you know, coaching right now is really challenging. Um, it it's, you know, as much as I love – building a program and, and having guys in my team for, you know, four and five years and guys like PJ and Chase. And um, I know that's becoming much more rare uh, and challenging. And, and uh, so it changes things a little bit. You, you certainly have to be open to the portal. And you, I think the most important thing is you find kids that, that fit what you're about, fit your program. Um, you know, you bring in guys that have opportunities to play so that uh, there's an understanding there. And I think it's really important that the guys who are still in your program are open to that. And, uh, you know, I pride myself on being extremely honest uh, with our players. Uh, sometimes they don't like all the things I have to say to them, but um, I do think they think I, I have their best interests at heart, and I'm always honest in terms of what we're trying to get done. And so, you know, we talk about bringing guys in and what we're looking to do and what that means moving forward. And, uh, you know, Certainly the guys that we brought in this year, uh, we knew that they were impact guys. And uh, we thought we had a chance to have a really good team. And, uh, you know, Joe and, and uh, Jack Clark and Boz and, and those guys have, have really done a nice job of, of helping our team. And uh, they did exactly kind of what we recruited them to do. And I give a lot of guys a lot of credit to the guys in our program because they've welcomed those guys. And we've had a great locker room. Somebody just asked me in the back there, what was the strength of our team? And I think it's our togetherness. I think we have guys that really care about one another. And uh, I'm really proud of that and uh, proud of our, our team because of that. Down front. John Blau with the Post and Courier. Um, hey, John. Hey. Uh, New Mexico, um, asking the players, they were saying the tempo is, reminds them a little bit of Alabama. I mean, would, yeah. you, would you say that's accurate? Yeah. How do you, what do you have to do well to combat that? Yeah, I mean, obviously, transition, uh, defense, rebounding are, are important, you know, much like when you play North Carolina. Um, they're an outstanding rebounding team as well. But they have great speed. Their guard play is outstanding. Uh, and that's not to take anything away from their two post players. The more that I've watched them, the more impressed I've been. Um, but w we've got to run good offense. We've got to take care of the ball. Um, they're aggressive defensively in certain ways. and. They'll even gamble a little bit and go for steals, and they try to block a lot of shots. They get their hands on balls. They're they're very active. Um, they they've been playing really hard, and uh, so us executing, us running good stuff, us uh, being opportunistic. It's not like we don't want to run when we have opportunities. We do, um, but just being smart about how we play and uh, making sure that you know we're balanced on defense and uh, that we rebound the ball very well. Run to the center. Uh, Jason Munns with the Commercial Appeal here in Memphis. Welcome back. Thank you. Uh, how did that hit you when you when the news when the when the on Selection Sunday that you'd be coming back here? Yes, it was funny because you know we're all kind of standing there as coaches and are we going to be in the seven ten game here? Or are we going to be in the six eleven game there? I think we all kind of figured those were the two most likely scenarios. And the longer it went, obviously you get a little more anxious. Um, but then it was like, hey, we see that. You know, 
Memphis is open. We've been there, right? We've played in the arena. Uh, pretty cool. And uh, although the game didn't end the way we wanted to, it was a heck of a game. And uh, our guys played pretty well in spurts and, and shot the ball well. So, you know, we had a great first experience here, minus the, the ending, maybe the last two minutes. Um, and so we were excited. Also, we know that a lot of our fans are going to be able to come. It's close enough that that they can come. And, and uh, with it being on Friday, makes it even easier for folks to get off work. So happy to be in Memphis. If you were going to go back to a place that you had played earlier in the season, would you have rather been somewhere you'd won? Um, I don't think we really worried about those kinds of things. Uh, just somewhere they're going to take good care of us, and they have so far. Over here. Uh, hey, Brad, Mike from Richmond again. Uh, one more on, on kind of the veterans and the guys yeah. that have been with you. Is it easier to make in-game uh, adjustments when you have guys that you know well, they know yeah. you? That's a good point, and yes, it is. It is um, much easier with an older group and with some experienced players that you've kind of been around a couple of years to know that we've – because I am a coach that adjusts a lot game to game. We, we change our scouting. We change our ball screen coverages. We – you know, we run different packages offensively in different games. We probably do more different things than a lot of teams, um, like in our league. And it does help to have a veteran group, and it helps to have guys that you've been with a couple years to kind of understand that and pass it along. And uh, I do think we have a tremendous culture. Um, we have former players that we've heard a lot from here recently that supporting us, and it's kind of just passed passed on down. You know. Um, Eli Thomas to Amir Sims to P.J. Hall to Ian Shefflin. And it's been like that for several years now, and it's something we're really proud of. Next two will come from the back left. Yeah. Hey, Brad, Phil Kornblut, Sports Talk Media Network. Hey, Phil. Hey, guy. Uh, three players all said they hated losing in the ACC tournament early, yeah. but it gave you extra practice yeah. time. And I think they all said practice went well. What did you see in practice? Did you? And, and jo Joseph said that even since they got the edge back that you had earlier. Yeah, I hope so. Um, and, you know, it's – I don't know if we, we're, we've we played as poorly as it's been made out um, by some of the media. I realize we've lost three out of four, and we did play very poorly against Boston College. And some of that, I don't want to take anything away from Boston College. Boston College is playing great basketball right now and just had a really good win uh, against Providence on the road. Uh, but we didn't play well in that game. And, uh, you know, the loss to Wake Forest, we played pretty well. Wake was Wake lost one game at home all year, and we had a chance to win late and just couldn't quite get it done, but we played well. We had some good wins in the last two weeks at home against Pittsburgh and Syracuse, two 20-win teams. So I don't think we're playing as poorly as some folks think, but we did play very poorly in the ACC tournament. Um, got home and had to face it, you know, and I was very direct with our players that it was a missed opportunity, and I was really disappointed in it. And, uh, you know, I think sometimes you can, at this time of year, there are more distractions than ever. Um, and I just challenged our guys to try to get back to the mindset that we had in November and December. And a lot of that, it's funny, but I asked our guys, when November, what were you thinking about in regards to basketball? And it was like, yeah, we're tired of practice. We just want to play. And it really doesn't matter who we play. Um, and then as you're winning in November and December, there's a joy and an excitement and an enthusiasm that you ride that wave. But then the season hits, and you're going to have some ups and downs, and, and uh, we certainly have been through a few of those. Um, and you got to kind of reset. And so we just talked about resetting, recentering ourselves, getting our, eliminating as many distractions and as much of the noise as we can, and let's get back to work. And so we practiced twice on Saturday and once on Sunday. Um, you know, did a very light workout on Monday and, and have worked out, obviously, Tuesday and Wednesday to get ready. So. Um, you know, I think we're ready. Uh, I hope we're recentered, but um, you know, this is about players making plays, and we're going to find out where our guys are here come game time. All right, we're uh, inside our final five minutes. We'll stay on the back. James Fletcher on three. Uh, in a conference in a school that's kind of football-driven in the conversation a lot of times, how important can success in March specifically <clears throat> be when you're in the national spotlight? Everybody's watching uh, to prove to or showcase to collectives, administration, yeah. boosters, what the value of contributing to your program is? Yeah, I don't think it's just the end of the year. Um, certainly that's a part of it. And, you know, making the NCAA tournament is unbelievably hard. Um, and so just getting to here is step one. Certainly building off of this is 
It's an unbelievable opportunity, and we love to take the next step, and that's what we're trying to do as a program. Um, you know, we've we've been to three of the last seven, so we've we've made some steps here. We went to a Sweet 16 and 18, uh, so we know what it looks like. Um, I think we've been consistently. I think we're fifth in the ACC in wins over the last five years. So I think we've done a lot of really good things that show people that we're a good basketball program and we're doing things the right way. But again, to take another step, we've got to we got to bust through consistently this time of year in this tournament. And it gives you the opportunity to do that. Um, nobody wants to more than me or our players. Um, and so, you know, again, we're excited about the opportunity that we have against New Mexico to, to, to do that. Go ahead. You were talking about distractions earlier. Um, there's been stuff in the news the last couple of days with regard to the ACC and the conference yep. and all that stuff. Is that a distraction? Is that? No, it's, I, to be honest with you, I mean, I'm not involved in any of that. Uh, there's a lot of folks on our campus much smarter than me that are leading our university. Graham Neff, our athletic director, Jim Clements, our president, um, our board. I mean, we've got great leadership at our, at our school and, and uh, so they're handling all that. My head's been down. They haven't called me one time to ask me my opinion or uh, thankfully I've been focused on New Mexico. Do you have an opinion? No, it, it, it's <laughs> too, too important for me to be involved in anything like that. Okay, we'll go to the back row. Yeah, Brad, on the topic of distractions, how have you found the transfer portal opening right before the NCAA tournament starts? What's that been like for you and your staff? Yeah, distracting. And, uh, you know, I'm on an NABC committee that uh, I was adamantly against this for this very reason. And, uh, you know, there's a, it, it's, it's a hard time of year for everybody, players, coaches, the whole nine yards. And there's a lot of coaches, especially at mid-major schools, whose tournaments end earlier. And they were very vocal about the longer we have to wait, the harder it is for us to figure out what we have to do. And so I understand why there's a segment of our, you know, uh, coaching fraternity that wants that. But I also think this is really, I don't think this is the right time. And for folks to be talking about it, and the media is talking about it to some degree. And as coaches, I have to have one eye on it. And um, I, I wish, you know, I wish we could wait a couple more weeks, maybe not all the way through the final four, certainly, but, you know, at least one more week to next week when now there's only 16 teams playing. And even if possible to get to the, the following week of the final four would even be best. But uh, I don't, you know, we're all kind of living and learning through this, this process right now. We'll end it on the front row. I mean, you list some of the accolades, um, three tournaments in the last seven years, a Sweet 16, all that. Do you feel like the fan base appreciates that, that they are able to see the bigger picture? And how do you deal with people who don't quite yeah. think you're doing enough? I, I don't worry about it. Um, I hope they do. Um, more importantly, it's about my administration and the folks that I work for um, and my players understanding that we're doing the best we can to put them in positions to be successful and and showing folks that this is a winning program and there has been a uh, a pretty high level of consistency. Um, you know, we're trying to, to raise the ceiling, certainly. Um, I know we've raised the floor considerably since I got here, um, but I, I don't get too distracted with all of that. I've got enough to worry about and and uh, day to day just coaching my team and, and planning for the future. Thank Coach, you. we'll get you out on that one. Okay. Uh, get you on the practice floor. Good luck tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you so much. We will be back in here in 15 minutes with the student-athletes from Texas A&M.